How many more players are we looking at for a side like this to really be able to compete for the title? Well, I mean, they probably need, you know, probably need five or six to really compete for the title. Let's be honest, that if you had to do a combined United City team, we're not going to get any United players in it. So that shows how far behind City they are. But, you know, just to pick up what Stevie said about United having money, they haven't got a lot of money this summer because they have got issues with FFP this year, surprisingly, with it being Man United. They, they overspent last year. They under-earned last year in terms of commercial revenue prize money. So their limit really this summer is, is around about £100 million unless they sell players to bring more money in. Now, wow. with all due respect, there aren't, there aren't many players at Man United you can sell right now to actually bump that figure up to a substantial figure. So if they've got £100 million to spend, that's a striker on maybe maybe a second-choice right-back. That's not a lot of business to be done. Now, they're looking at midfielders, they're looking at you know, people like, I mean, people like Rabio is, is being mentioned again. And this is the sort of market they're in that they're looking for players that are coming to them with the contract. So they might be, you know, cheaper deals. Mason Mount, for instance, at Chelsea, who, again, I think it'd be a good addition in the sense that he would be better than what they've got, but he's not a world beater. But United have got financial restrictions this summer. So if you're looking at £100 million budget and you try to raise maybe £40, £50 million, who are they going to sell? They'll probably sell Harry Maguire, but... You know, Harry Maguire was an £85 million signing three years, four years ago. He's on about, you know, a much bigger salary than most clubs can afford. Who's going to pay what United want for him? It's the same with a lot of the players. They haven't got a lot of players that you'd want to spend a lot of money on. Scott McTominay, Fred, these players, Anthony Martial, they're not going to get a lot of money. So United have a problem. Unless they get taken over in the next few weeks or the next few days before the window opens, they're going to have a problem. So they've got this opportunity now to take a leap forward but it might be taken away from them by the fact they haven't got the money to do it and the takeover keeps dragging on. Do you want to respond to that? I'm shocked. Well, they can, they can uh, again, if I'm Harry Kane and I know this, which I clearly didn't know before we, we did the show, they've got, I mean, it sounds really strange, but a measly 100 million is not, <laughs> yeah. is not going to be anywhere close to what United need mm. to make themselves title contenders. And if I'm Harry Kane... I'm, I'm going to think twice about what I said five minutes ago. Because why is <laughs> Harry Kane going to go there yeah. if, if, they, if, if he's the only signing? Because nobody's going to buy any of the players that, that, that Augie's just mentioned. Purely, pr never mind the, the transfer fees, but the wages that they're on. Well, yeah, that's the thing. They're not going so the, to so the, so the, go because oh. they're, they're not going to get the wages so at the new did, club anyway. So how do they get better? They can't. Well, this is the problem. This is the problem United have got in the sense that the ownership is the issue because if if a takeover goes through and whether it's Ineos or whether it's Qatari backers that come in, then that situation will change. They'll still have restrictions in terms of FFP because it's the club. It's not the owners that have the FFP issues. But if you're a potential signer, you'll think, well, at least I'm going to a club which I know in the next two or three windows is going to invest in the squad. If you go there right now with the Glazers who are you know half a foot out of the club, not wanting to be there, not wanting to spend on the ground, there's a lot of issues to address. If you're Harry Kane and the Glazers on Man United, you're thinking, don't really fancy that. If the Qatar is on Man United, then it might be a case of, well, let's get on the ground floor before it takes off again. But right now, I think that it is a reality check, a reality check for a lot of United fans that if the ownership stays the same for the next month or two, then the transfer window is going to pass them by. The transfer window opens on the, on the 14th of June. So that is already less than a month away. We haven't even had a nominated preferred bidder yet. Due diligence will take about a month. The best case scenario for a takeover now is beginning of July. And by then, you know, you're back in pre-season training. The signings have been put on. Who makes the signings? Who signs the checks? We don't know the answer to these yet because United are in limbo. And that is another issue. They're in limbo. They haven't got a massive pot of cash under the Glazers. So prospective signs are thinking, well, yes, United are on the up, but can they sustain that? Because I'm sure Liverpool will be better next season. I'm sure Chelsea will be better next season. Arsenal, Newcastle. United need to keep keep spending or to keep running to stay ahead of the pack. They can't stand still this summer, but they might have to. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.